Community Kitchen is proudly brought to you by Gemini Catering Equipment at gemcat.com.au. And tonight's episode of Community Kitchen, proudly supported by the Thornbury Local, High Street Thornbury. Featuring two levels, a function room, a balcony and courtyard, plus authentic pizzas and good tunes all week long. For more, go to their Facebook page. On tonight's Community Kitchen, we're joined at the Thornbury Local with Dave O'Neill, who makes us his signature banana bread. We have a chat at the bar and we listen to a song by Ryan Sterling. Hello, this is Community Kitchen. I'm Laura Davis and we're at the Thornbury Local. Uh, later on in the show, we have Ryan Sterling. Right now, Dave O'Neill. Hey, how are you? I'm pretty good. What are we making? Banana bread. Well, either we call it banana bread in our house, but it's just cake, really. Just in your house? Well... I think they call it banana bread a lot everywhere. of places. Yes. <laughs> but we try and pretend we're healthy. with a got three kids and they, they think they're eating... They know it's cake. Do you do sneaky stuff like great veggies into it? Oh, them? no, with bolognese and stuff I do. So I do a lot of the cooking. You could do like, cooking. like so a gonna... carrot cake, banana bread hybrid. Yeah, you could. Carrot cake's beautiful. I love them. Um, I don't make many desserts, but I make this about once a week, so I'm quite used to making ah. it. So yeah, it's it's quite it's quite. You're cracking right in. Yeah, I oh, man, I'm into it. Don't worry about that. Oh, there's a few don't shells. Don't even They're don't even ask what he's doing. Yeah, I'm just. Oh, well, I'm creaming the butter. So you got um, some eggshell. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. That's the crunch. Your kids don't care. We say they're the crunchy bits. They're all right. <laughs> yeah. So I've got. Oh, sorry. I've got two that's eggs good. and um. And a, look, and a big wad of butter. Yeah. And um, look, you can put the... So, um, so about a fist, about a fist of butter? Yeah, half a block. And um, you don't have to use that much. And you can put also put sugar in this too. Now we've got to cream it. Look, you would normally use a mix master for this kind of thing, but we can we can improvise. <laughs> it's all right. We can make a mix master. I feel like we should break that up. Yeah, break up the butter would be a great... Oh, there's a bit of shell. Yeah, we want to get that yeah. shell out. You're right. Yeah, we should I get am. that shell That's out. Big. That's a big, crunchy bit. That's a big, bit. crunchy bit, isn't it? Right. But it's it's actually a, it's a kind of relative it's relatively healthy snack I suppose like a banana bread. How do you feel about like those biscuits where they just they they just use banana and oats and like they blend it? Yeah, that sounds great. Bake it, they're chewy. Like actually, chewy. quite. I don't mind healthy food. I mean, I, I I I'm a large man and I've spent a lot of time eating takeaway food, but I I quite like eating healthy food. As well as bad food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your favourite bad food? Oh, I like um, oh, souvlaki's. Yes. A good a good souvlaki, which is qu quite a unique Melbourne thing because I was in Hobart I had a souvlaki and I'm like, oh, this isn't as good. And in Adelaide they call them gyros, you know, they have different names yeah. and, and they're not as good. The Greek souvlaki is yeah. beautiful. That's all this right. This is what happened. This is. <laughs> this is <laughs> fine like because it's quite warm in here and it's going it's going to it's going to. Mix up fine, don't worry about that. This is like the before, the before. in an infomercial for an electric mixer. Mm, look at that. <laughs> Just two people pulling their hair out, Lab trying to do it manually. Yeah, that's all right. This is how y y your mums may have done it, you know? <laughs> Certainly the dads didn't do it, because my dad would not know. That's the one thing that's changed with the uh, dads of today, is that a lot of us cook. All my brothers, I've got three brothers, we all cook. It's very in vogue. Yeah, but whereas my father's generation, none of them could. When dad, when mum would go away like once a year, they, they would, oh yeah, look at you go. Dad would cook and it was the most horrible, oh my God, what a machine. When father would cook, it was the most horrible thing ever. He would just like give you a raw onion and stuff like that. It's almost, you have yeah, 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 no, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm not you've done really to well. Do that. No, you've done really well. Who okay. Do you cook for? Who do you cook for? Oh, I've got three kids. So ah. I cook for them. You probably have to or they die. They die. <laughs> they die. <laughs> and you can't get pizza every night, apparently, no. even though they'd like that. Oh, I've got a, a, a wife too. But um, I cook, I, I, I grew up, mum was a great cook. And, um, we, but she was a classic 1960s housewife. We weren't allowed in the kitchen, you know. We ah. weren't, no. That generation, 
of mums really didn't. Like, we, I remember sitting there watching the milk boil over on the stove. <laughs> and we're going, Mum, the milk's boiling over, Mum. But once I moved out to a shared house, I was quite, I about 19 when I moved out, we had to, you had to cook, right? Yeah. We, lived, we lived with four other guys, my brother and four other, three other guys. And uh, you had to learn how to cook. And so we would just spend, we would go to the shops and go, oh, let's get some schnitzels. And then, bring, and then you try and cook them, you have to ring up your mum. One of us would ring our mothers. Like, mum, how do you cook schnitzel? It's terrible. Because, you know, you eat the schnitzel, you think that's fine, but there's a trick to cooking that stuff. There you is. know, that, that, that mum's new. But, and so, yeah, so that's where I, I learned to cook in shared housing. Because uh, even though we did eat a lot of takeaway food, but we would like to cook. This, now, this does not look. No, that's all right. That's going to melt. Fine. That's butter. So we put the banana in now. Okay. Get the banana going. So brown, these are excellent because these are brown. This is a good. It's a good way of, well, I'll use that one. It's a good way of using up your old bananas. Yeah. You know, and like, you don't, I don't really like eating these bananas. No, like, I don't even like them being peeled well, in the face. Well, one of my friend's dads calls them a honey banana when they get this this, this rotten. But you just, Ugh, um, sorry. Gross. Sorry. No, it's fine. Yeah, this but, gross. sorry, it's great. But you um, get this in a cake, or bread as we call it. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, the flavour of a banana is... It's my favourite flavour, banana. Really? Yeah, like fake banana, like a banana milkshake. No. Oh, I love it. Just, um, just for the people at home. <laughs> That's what we're working with. Yeah. But it's, it, look, seriously, I can now, I've got this down, I can make this in five minutes. Don't try to justify what you've done here. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter. This is like, uh, it, once you get this in the oven, it is beautiful. But we can't get it out of the whisk. I know. Yeah, that's a problem, isn't <laughs> you it? put the whisk in the oven. Just mash oh. it up. So yeah, I cook a lot, but um, I just try and cook things that I want to eat. So I often cook variations of, you know, I make pizzas and stuff like that and uh, roasts. I'm fairly Anglo-Saxon, actually. I'm pretty boring <laughs> and like a, a bogan chef, but... Well, if, nah. if cooking's, cooking's not a hobby, what are your <laughs> hobbies? I don't really have a hobby. No? No, just between, no that, that's interesting because I, don't, oh, I like reading. Read books. Yeah. Watch. Well, with uh, uh, I don't I don't work during the day. That's why I'm here now. And I was looking after the kids a lot at home, and they're all at school now. So okay. I just wander the streets now. I go. I'm on first name terms with everyone down the local shops. <laughs> so I go down there, and then I just get in conversations with the guy in the deli, and you know you end up going hanging out with them. And, That's fun. Yeah, and so and um, and so t so. T you know, I do comedy at night and just, I just, just the best stand comedy. up and I do a bit of writing during the day and stuff and then at night to relax, my, I watch TV. I just tape shows and watch TV at night and my wife's on the computer in the other room. It's a perfect relationship. That sounds amazing. Yeah. What do you think is the key to keeping a relationship happy oh. and healthy? Don't ask me. Keeping the spark <laughs> alive. Making banana cake. Just, just... Oh. I'm not dealing well with this. No, you're doing all right. We've got to add the, um, keep the spark alive. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's on my head. Don't ask me. It's <laughs> Time apart. That might be the secret, I think. But it's a, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Go on, give that a, give that a whisk. Um, yeah, look at that. Your hobby would be good. But I, I'll look at some hobbies and I, you know, what, what, what about, I reckon I'd be good with one of those boats, you know, when people take those little boats down the lake and they, <laughs> but I'm not very mechanical or anything, so I don't know, if it broke I wouldn't be able to fix it. What are your kids' hobbies? You could join in with Lego, them. they love yeah. Lego, they read a lot, um, they try and watch the TV, but we don't, we don't let them, and we don't let them get on the computer. We're like Amish people, basically, <laughs> we say, no screen, screen time you call it, no screen time until on the weekend, so. That's, that's good. Well, that's how it should be. You were brought up a little bit. Were you, I remember you told me once, you were brought up in the mountains, weren't you? You in the hills? Were you a hill yeah. tribe? Yeah, I was yeah. a hill tribe. You are a hill person. And so I bet you your mum was a little bit hippie-ish, was she? Or? Not so much hippie-ish, but yeah, we did have... We more of us yeah. didn't have screens in the same yeah. way that... That we have that, oh, it's, yeah. it's, you go out for dinner and there's kids sitting around playing iPads, it's a disgrace. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's um, a disgrace. Long any, trips in cars, disgrace. The, the, like you see infants, like as soon as they can grasp yeah. stuff, just watching kids shows on a little nah. thing. 
on yeah, the, nah. so that they don't cry and whinge. But just yeah, let nah, them cry and whinge. And whinge exactly. Whack them if they do. Yeah, whack them. you do. <laughs> we can't whack them anymore. No, you're not allowed to whack them anymore. Some, I, well, some people, some people do. Some people do, and they can call the cops. That's um, right. Um, <laughs> you get swipe. very, you get very close to hitting them, but you tr you, you try and restrain yourself. One of my friends puts his kids on the bed and whacks the bed like that. Oh, God damn it. God, you've made me angry. Look, and as, uh, when I studied to be a teacher, one teacher said to me, you, can, you can't hit them, but you can squeeze them. And so they do a bit of that kind of, listen. You do a bit of that as a parent. Not to be recommended. A bit of squeezing. A bit of squeezing. Don't squeeze too hard. Um, oh, look at this. Look at that batter. See, this is almost, this is fantastic. With the... Look at that, it's a great, that one be beautiful, that cake. Look at that, I, I think, I think we're ready. In there. Yeah. Look, man, we should, we should so, so yeah, like they, uh, they're hobbies, yeah, a lot of Lego. Try and push them outside, you know. They don't want to go outside, they don't want to play their Lego. They've got, they're kind of, they're, because they're, they're 10, 7 and 5, they still play with teddies too, which is kind of cute. So they, oh. they make teddy trains and, you know, they, the, my daughter makes the teddies get married and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Puts ribbons in their hair, you know. She's not in the dolls though. Don't, don't mention the D word around her. She's no, like, nah, not dolls, dolls. Are, dolls are crap. But I mean, I, I loved teddies when I was a kid. I bought, my mum always reminds me, I'm a twin, and I bought, my twin brother and I bought our teddies for the first day of prep, and they were big, huge ones that we wanted to carry. Us. Yeah, we're just greasing the pan here because it'll stick otherwise. Oh, you, you're doing well there. So I bought my teddy to prep on the first day and got picked on by the grade sixes. Ah. <laughs> Wasn't that traumatic? Yes. Probably, probably my older brothers, actually. They probably led the picking on. That's what normally happens. That's a greasy. There we go. All right, now let's goodness. pour it in. And this is this is perfect for that the releasing almost, of the cake. See, it hasn't even taken much long. And this is a healthy snack. It's better than a donut or a... Well, probably not better than a donut. It wouldn't be better tasting, but <laughs> it's better for you. And once you put it in the oven, it's a beautiful smell. And you <laughs> That's can, the best part. That's the best part. And... It will. Oh, I didn't put the bicarb in. Oh, look, you need a bit of bicarb just to. Ah, we'll, we'll just sprinkle we'll just sprinkle that on the top, and, and I'll mix, mix it through. Mix. Yeah, go, go. A bit Let's of bicarb. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Is yeah. that enough? Yeah, that's heaps. We'll just mix that through a little bit because that's going to help with the rising of the uh, the cake. I feel like we might undo some of the pan greasing with the mixing. Oh no, that's all right. All right. Well. Let's see oh. if that works. Oh, that'll be beautiful. <laughs> see, and you know what? The best thing about this, I don't have to clean up afterwards. No, so you, none of us some, do. Someone has somebody, to. Somebody does. I feel sorry for them because that's how I spend my life cleaning up the kitchen. All right, look at that. It's not too that bad. will rise. That will rise. Let's put it in the oven and we'll go have a chat. Okay, and then we'll get our banana <laughs> we'll be bread. Back in a little bit on community kitchen. Mm. Ah. Local with Dave O'Neill. Our banana bread is cooking. And mm. You can smell it. You can smell it's it, the, yeah. It's the nice smell that we wanted. That's what. That's the good thing about banana bread. You can smell it cooking. It's a nice aroma for the house. What What do you like to do with your kids? What sort of? Ah, uh, what do we do? When they're little. Go to the park. Park's fairly boring though. They're refurbishing the local park, which is good news. But they always want to go to a newer park or a better park. We we want to go to a park we've never been to before. That's their whole their <laughs> thing. And so the word spreads amongst parents. There's a good one called Wombat Bend, and it's like they've got like water and a sand pit, sand pit flowing in water oh. flowing into a sand pit, and they've got flying foxes, which is good for the age. There's three kids different ages, so they can all do something different, you know. Yeah. So that's good. So there's always a search for the new park, the better park, because the, when I was a kid there. There were parks, there was no really equipment in them. No. There was maybe one with a slide, or they'd just put an old... You know what they do? They put an old steam train. And there we go. That's your play <laughs> equipment, kids. Go hang off that. In fact, I went to a kinder, because my dad was in the Air Force, it used to have an old plane in it. 
We used to play in the old plane. Yeah, that sounds oh, great, fun. Great times. That's great times. What do you remember most fondly from your childhood, if it's not fish and chips oh, computer yeah. games? Um, oh, we used to go beach holidays. We had a beach house. Well, mum and dad still have a beach house. And we used to go down there a fair bit, even though by the time we got to... We used to love that when we were little kids, but by, by the time we got to teenagers, that's Cape Patterson, which is near Phillip Island on the coast. And we used to call it Cape Dump and Cape Boredom because we were so... As, as teenagers, we were so bored going down there every holidays, you know, every holiday, sleeping in bunk beds. Uh, I wasn't that interested in the ocean, to be honest. But enough. anyway, um, I have good memories about going to my nana's. My nana lived in Richmond, which is, you know, in a city. It was, a, it was just when she, when my mum grew up there, it was like a slum, you know what I mean? Mm. And she had the classic working class house with, she used to climb over the back fence to a neighbour Marge. So it was that great community, and they lived next door to a pub, and Granddad used to get pots of beer handed over the fence. Aww. You know, good old days, good old days. Thanks, Marge. And we used to walk up and down the, the, the bridge road with it when it was just all old shops and stuff, and it was a great time. Pretty fun. Did you have a good time at school? School, I like school. I tell my wife I actually really like school, and she's you like, tell your wife, but because she's like else. nobody else, because she says I didn't like I didn't like school. I said, well, I actually really like school because I didn't have any sisters. So I didn't. I like mixing with girls actually at school. Mm. I quite like that, and I was quite social, so I quite liked school. I quite liked it. I thought school was better than uni actually. Uni was disappointing. Where did you study? I did teaching. I did primary teaching. Yeah. Then I did one year of arts. And then I did an arts degree in public relations, PR. But I went straight from, so like, um, when I did HSC, year 12, you started with like, at, I went to a big high school and you would have started with, I don't know, in year seven there would have been 500 kids maybe, or it was, it was a big, that's maybe that's too many, no, maybe it was 200 or something, 150. Don't lie to I'm just, me. I'm just, I'm just narrowing it down. Maybe it was 150. And then by the time, <laughs> though, you got to VCE, it had narrowed down to about 40 kids because everyone yeah. had left to be a tradesman or whatever, or a hairdresser. And so um, HSC was really good fun. But then when I went to uni, I thought, oh, this is going to be awesome. Because I was in the bands and stuff and going What's out. What's in a band? Oh, just, you know, alternative rock, pop, ska music. What's you know, gum? ska music is reggae music sped up. So like Madness and the Specials oh. and that kind of stuff. They were big in the 80s in Australia. Believe yeah. And so we used to go see bands. Oh, like, the, you know, oh, God, bands like The Church. I mean, not all. All those bands just used to play in the local pubs. Mm. So we used to go see all those bands. In Excess, maybe going to see In Excess quite a few times. And, um, and so when I went to Teachers College, I thought, oh, this is going to be awesome. You know, this will be the best fun ever. But... What they did, they put us in classes with people from your same area. Mm. So yeah, so like I grew up in the outer east, and like we put you all with people from Mitcham, Ringwood, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to hang out with these people, <laughs> really. And like a lot of the girls knew each other through a Christian connection. They were all Christians, mm. and so you know that. And so I found that really, maybe because it was primary teaching that quite con people do that are quite conservative. I don't know, but it was quite of it was a letdown, put it that way. I thought uni was going to be this big party. And it wasn't. So if you weren't a comedian, you'd be a primary school teacher? Yeah, but I did teaching and I finished the course when I was 20 and I, I vowed, I said, I will never do this because it's really hard work. <laughs> it's really hard. Well, you've worked in childcare, you know. I have, I It's have. hard work. And, I, I, and in these days, depending on your marks, that's where you got sent to yes. what school. So all the girls that were, you know, SWATs and um, good at school, they all got the cushy sort of eastern suburbs, inner suburbs. I was going to get sent to... Broken Hill or somewhere. Uh. My marks weren't great. So I just said, I'm not filling out the form. There's no way I'm doing this. Because could you imagine being a teacher when you're 20? I was 20. So I was barely, I was just out yeah, of my but teens. Teaching like six oh, year olds. Six year yeah, olds. No. Yeah, I couldn't control them. 20 is 50 when you're six. So <laughs> true. But then I, um, then I uh, did arts at, at, at uni, I, I, but I ran out of money. And that so happens that very happens. quickly that when you happens. go into the arts. So I got a job at the Red Cross as a field officer, which is kind of like public education, driving around giving talks and stuff. Then I started doing PR at uni. I moved to a private PR company. I got sacked because I was pretty bad at my job. And then I started doing comedy. 
So I don't reckon I'd be a teacher. I'd probably be working in PR. What was your dream job when you were a kid? Uh, I would have been an archaeologist. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dinosaurs yeah. or ruins? I reckon dinosaurs. But I did one unit of it when I did arts at, at uni and it was very boring. <laughs> There's just like a lot of geology talk. It's a lot of scrapping. Yeah, and I did, I did volunteer work at the museum. I'm like, oh, this is boring. This is like, you've got to really be content to just sit there. If you're a child or a person who's content to sit there and just intricate kind of stuff. Like a toothbrush. Yeah, whereas I'm not. I'm more a people person, obviously. Well, you, I'm, am I? So I'm a people. Hard. I'm peopling, and I just went, I'm not going to do this. And so... You know, it takes you a while to work out what you're going to do, but I always wanted to be a comedian, so... Yeah? But, you know, when you're growing up, you don't realise that's an actual job. Well, it certainly wasn't when I started comedy. It wasn't really a job, so to speak. My mum maintains that my old brother, Mark, he's the really funny one in the family. Oh, yeah, he's a, he, he's a very funny one. You should listen to Mark, as she always says. Oh, ow. Ouch. But, yeah, there's four boys in the family, and myself and Mark, we're quite funny, and the two other boys aren't that funny. We, they're quite serious and quite vain. They're the better looking two. We're yeah. the larger ones. So yeah, yeah. As a kid, at high school, I was a real smart ass. I remember that much. Yeah. And I used to do. I used to. Do, I wasn't the class clown, but I used to direct the class clown and telling what to do. I come with ideas for him. Like to, we used to. We had drama this. Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drama <laughs> turkey. I'm like, right. What are we going to do today? Like we came with this one. We used to do a lot of practical jokes and stuff. Like we stole pot plants from the library. It was my idea. We stole pot plants Brilliant. from the library and ransomed them put ransom letters on their really? desk. Yeah, yeah, and hid them in the music room. That was a good one. No one will find them there. But my, my, Mark, the funny one, he was, he was like, he was a bit um, punked and a bit, you know, jackass before his time. What he, he used to get all the kids involved. So he was a bit of a naughty boy and he used to get all the year nine and year 10 boys. He used to go, all right, we're going to all line up and we're all going to walk through the library in single file and not say a word. So we'd all line up and just walk through the library. That and is... Then he'd, and then he'd, he'd yell at Egyptian and we'd all have to walk like that. It's free jackass. <laughs> it's free jackass. Free jackass. <laughs> I don't know what post jackass is. I don't know what it is, but he was pre jackass. And so we used to do that kind of stuff. Well, we should go and check our oh. banana bread because I think it's going to burn. It's going to burn. We're going to taste it. Yum. Uh, we're going to take a break now and afterwards we'll be back with our banana bread verdict and a mm. song from Ryan Sterling. Local with banana say? bread. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> what did you just say, Dave O'Neill? Dave O'Neill. Yeah, Dave O'Neill's banana bread. <laughs> Maybe we should market this. Is this this is how it always looks? Yep. It's not bad. Considering there's no sugar in it. I feel it didn't rise quite. Sometimes it doesn't rise though. Sometimes it just sits flat. I don't know why, but it's not bad. Probably needs yeah. The butter's good on it. I like a proper banana bread. It's not even a banana cake. Oh, it is good. Yeah, it's very good. I was a fool. No, don't ever doubt the banana bread. It's, it's a simple, easy recipe to make. I like it without the sugar too. Well, it's better for you. <laughs> We're all trying to give up sugar. I Are love we sugar. though? I love sugar. And I love <laughs> salt. Which is worse? Probably salt, I reckon. Mm, I, reckon I salt like will it. Kill you. Too much salt. salt kill strokes. You. Heart attacks. Whereas sugar. This makes you fat, which leads to strokes and heart Oh attacks. man, what do you even do with that? Oh man. Thank you so much for coming in and having a chat with us. No worries. And we want to thank the Thornbury Local for having us. And we take you out with a song from Ryan Sterling. Thank you very much for watching Come in the Kitchen. When you're searching for the beautiful pieces when you're forcing a smile But all your friends can see That although you've cut your hair Bought new clothes You're so low, so low Sun-blinded
friends used to share When you're at some party And nobody seems to care That you've drifted off alone Lying in a corner Drinking wine from the laundry detergent cup Cause you couldn't find a glass Some blinded love Unblinded love You like the same bands You wore each other's clothes But those songs are starting to kill you, man Cause every time you get home Before 4.30 in the morning You can't hardly wait Lying on your back Watching those trees Scrape the sky Some blinded love Some blinded love Some blinded love Some blinded love Tonight's episode of Community Kitchen was proudly supported by the Thornbury Local, 635 High Street, Thornbury.